Hello everyone, welcome back to another Keyence IV4 training video. Today we're going to be covering changing the master text of your AI OCR tool over Ethernet IP using an Allen Bradley PLC. So as you can see our master text right now is inkjet, but we're going to actually change that so that it reads laser and we're able to read that. Before we jump into the PLC side of things, there's one setting you'll want to make sure you have turned on that'll make this process a lot easier for everyone. So you can put it in program mode and go to sensor advanced and then in utility under communication settings and the field net comm unit settings you'll want to make sure you have byte swap enabled whenever you're doing any sort of OCR with the IV4 you'll want to have byte swap enabled handshake control leave disabled that is unless you're going to be triggering it faster than your PLC's RPI which is very rare so you always want that disabled pretty much and for OCR applications you want byte swap enabled. Okay, so now that we have that enabled, we can close this and I'll put this back in run mode and we can pull up our uh, Studio 5000 that we're using for programming. So for this, you'll see in my controller tags here, this is already set up so that we have an IV4 added using the EDS file and we've imported our tags as well. So there's an Ethernet IP setup video. If you guys haven't done that step yet, please watch that video first. That's on the Keyence YouTube channel. Now you can see, let's put this online so that we can see what's going on. I want to show off a little bit. First off, just how to read the red text and show you what that byte swap does for us. So I'm going to put this over here, put this guy there, and we'll make this small so we can see what we're looking for. So I'll go to monitor tags and you'll see we're getting data back here. If I expand one of these out on our input data, we can see that, yep, we're in run mode and this is displaying communicating correctly. So we've got Ethernet IP enabled and we've got the correct IP address specified in our module. Now, a common question is actually just how do I read in the red text? And in this case, our red text matches our master text and it's going to come into these words here in two character groupings so I know this says uh, tool one matching rate minimum lower threshold upper threshold when the tool in question is actually an OCR tool then these words are used for the red text now if we did not have byte swap enabled this would read N I J K T E so it kind of mixes up the order in which those two character groupings come back. Um, right now it's just zeros down here. Uh, these word areas from uh, 41 to 45 all are reserved for when the tool is an OCR tool. If you can read, you can read up to 16 characters just in the standard mode. If you do need to read in more than 16 characters, you'll want to use a different configuration of the EDS file. Uh, which we'll get into in a later video. In most cases, you don't need to read more than 16 characters per, per tool. And you don't need to use any special configuration. So if we were reading a longer string of text, those would all come in here. Now, let's go collapse this so we can see everything else. We've got our IV4 inputs, we've got our IV4 outputs. These are our local tags, of course. And you'll see I've added one, two, three, four, five, six tags here. So the first one is just an update bit. This is just a bool. Um, that we'll be using to start the whole process. Uh, we use it here, here, and here in our logic, and we'll go through the whole logic in just a sec. I've got my setting number, which is 1501. Now, 1501 is the specific number you have to write to the IV4 at our output data 3 in order to make sure that it updates all the letters in a batch. So 1501 is the number to look for here. I've got LA, SE, and R here just as ints, and I've just got them show match, uh, formatted so their style as ASCII. And you'll see actually at the end of the R one, we have a dollar sign zero zero, and this is the ASCII character for null. Whenever you send the master text to update it, and you're sending that to the IV4, you have to make sure it ends with the null character, just to, so that the IV4 knows the text it's receiving is done, and that's kind of like the appending to the text at the end. 
I also have a one-shot bit here. It's just a pool 32 to make sure that uh, when we send our request to update the master text, that it sends it's just a one-shot. So now we can kind of jump into the logic. And I've already got this all set up. And I'm just going to explain what I've done here. So like I said, sort of this dummy update bit. When I show you how this works to update it, I'm just going to toggle that on. And it'll activate all three rungs of logic, which is exactly what we want. So first thing it does is it moves that setting number into data three. Now, I had already done this a couple times practice beforehand, so it's already been moved in there. Uh, in your case, usually this output data three is just at zero with nothing there to start. So we have to move in our setting number so it knows what kind of change it's going to make. Our next rung here, we're going to move our words into our IV4 output bits. So IV4 output data three, that's the setting number, so it knows what kind of change it's going to make. And then four will take the first two letters of the word you want to update to. Five will take the second two. And six will take the last one in this case. But you repeat this ad infinitum. Now, when you first load in the IV4 by default, I'm going to pull this up here, show you the properties. The size of it may not be large enough on the outputs for you to get all of those in there. So I've set mine to eight so we have enough room to send all these characters. You can just go in here when you're offline and increase the output size of the module. So however many characters you need to send, you may need to increase it a little bit there. All right. Then with these words written, so we're writing the letters into our outputs. So now we've told it what kind of update we're doing. We told it what we want to update the text to. And then all we have to do is execute a setting value change request. So the master text is sort of a setting value, and we're changing the value of that text. So when we activate this update bit, it's going to send this through. This is kind of the standard uh, request response self-latching circuit we recommend for triggering, program changing, etc. So this is how you normally do it. If this was a trigger request, it'd be trigger request and trigger response here, normally close type bit. So with that all said, now we can sort of see how this works here. If I just toggle on my update bit, you'll see over on the IV Smart Navigator side of things, you're going to see this master text change from inkjet to laser. And there we go. So now you can see it's given us a no good because it's saying our master text is now laser and it's reading inkjet, which is wrong. But if I go ahead and put laser into our box, it's going to read that just fine. So this is a really useful function you can use over Ethernet IP if you have a PLC connected to your IV4 and need to change what that OCR tool is looking at. Instead of creating a bunch of different OCR tools and slowing down your processing time, you can have one tool just change the text you're looking at when a lot code gets updated or something like that. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to 1-888-KIENTS, option 2 for tech support, and stand on the lookout for more videos and tutorials like this. Thank you. Have a great day.